Hi there. Uh, we have understood the translog production function, but uh, the translog concept can also be applied to the cost functions. And that's why we are going to study the translog cost function today and also how we can develop the conditional input demand functions from it. So before we go ahead, I encourage you to subscribe so that you continue receiving such uh, rare re uploaded videos on YouTube. And also you should click the bell icon so that you continue receiving such videos. So now let's come to the topic and that is about the cost function in the class log version. So just like the production function, we are going to view the cost function. But here there is a slight change because instead of inputs, we are going to use their prices and also we are going to use output as an independent variable. Then we have uh, a two input case of the class log cost function. This is natural log of cost and this is the intercept part. And then we have the linear specification just like in the production function. But we have output as one of the independent variables and also the prices of the inputs. So instead of the two input case of production function, we have not just two terms, rather three terms because Q is the third independent variable in addition to the input prices. Similarly, we have nonlinear that is quadratic specification for these three variables. That is the natural log of Q, it's square, the natural log of price of labor, it's square, the natural log of price of K, square, and we have their parameters named accordingly. It was gamma one with the natural log of Q now it is gamma 2 with the natural log of q whole squared. Now we have the interaction terms as well. Uh, here you can see the interaction term for output and price of labor, the interaction term for output and price of capital, and the inter interaction term for the two input prices. It covers all the possibilities. Assuming that there is symmetry, that is the products if the order is reversed, it will give us the same answer, just like 2 into 3 will be equal to 3 into 2. So we write this once, that is BQL and BQK and BLK. There is no need for uh, beta LQ and beta KQ and beta KL. Now this was the formation of the translog cost function. Here we have its uh, conditional input demand functions. They can be found by deploying the Sheffer lemma, which is here which gives us the inputs, that is their input demand functions, once if we differentiate the cost function with respect to the price of that certain input. Here there will be natural log of the cost function because it is natural log cost function and the differentiation will be logarithmic because uh, we are dealing with the variables in their natural logarithmic form. So we are going to do this respectively with, uh, for price of labor and price of capital. Then we have uh, the left hand side now with the derivative and this is the derivative that is with respect to natural log of price of labor. This is the same cost function that we just saw. And then we have the conditional input demand function. We are using a hat for it so that it represents the conditional input demand function. Uh, this is simple differentiation in its partial logarithmic form. Just to give you a hint, since it is with respect to labor, so uh, this term and this term and this term and this term. These are the terms that will be entertained. The many terms will reduce to zero because they do not have uh, labor in them. And uh, this is one of the examples. These are the terms with no labor in them. So they are going to disappear in our results. So you can pause the video and see this uh, differentiation. It is quite similar to what you have seen in the previous videos of the translog production function. Cancellation will happen. For example, this cancellation and this cancellation. Here the power rule will be applied just like we have done it before in translog production function. And again, cancellation will happen here. You can see another cancellation here. This will give us a simplified form of the conditional input demand function of labor, and it is equal to this. We can see that it is dependent upon price of labor and price of capital and output. Since output is there as one of the determining variables in this demand function. So it is known as the conditional input demand function. Similarly, we can do it for capital, and definitely we will differentiate it logarithmically with respect to the price of capital, the same logarithmic cost function. So you can see it is written here, and in the next step we start solving it. Only the terms with PK will be entertained. This term, this term, and this term, and 
this stuff. So you can pause the video and learn from the previous step in which we did it for labor. So this will be the conditional input demand function for capital after the simplification steps. And it is again a function of price of labor, the other output input and price of capital, the own price and the outputs. So due to output, it becomes a conditional input demand function. So this is how we can calculate the input demand functions as well as we can understand the basics of the cost function that is the translog cost function. You may like it if you have learned from it. Thank you.